If you are new in Blender, welcome to the right place. In this course, I will share with you all what you need to know as a beginner about Blender interfaces setup, Blender workspace, modeling, UV mapping, modifiers, shaders, camera and render setting and more. Then I will show you step by step how you can create your own characters. So first thing first and as a beginner, you don't need to know everything about this software because it will confusing you. How can I get Blender? Blender is available for download on Windows, Macs and Linux. You can download Blender under www.blender.org or you can follow the link in the description below. When we starting Blender, the splash screen appears in the center of the window as you see. Well, this box is popped up anytime if you open Blender. In this area, we can create new projects or open recently open blend files. To close the splash screen click anywhere outside the splash screen or hit the escape key. To open the splash screen again click on this icon and here we go. This area called the 3D viewboard and you will spend the most of time using Blender in this area. And the question is how to navigate Blender? Hold the middle mouse wheel and click to rotate your view in the 3D world. Scroll the mouse wheel up and down to zoom in or out or hold control middle mouse wheel. By holding shift and the middle mouse wheel we can move in the 3D world just like that. To focus on one object hit the period key on the numpad. Mouse left click to select any object. Left click on empty space to deselect. Also you can press A to select everything and A twice to deselect. By click and drag on the left mouse click we can select a specific area. The hotkey for that is B on the keyboard. As you see this is our camera and light. Hit zero numpad to look through the camera, zero numpad again to get back into the 3D viewboard. Don't worry I will explain the camera settings in another video. Hit one numpad to go to the front view, control numpad to go to the back view, three numpad to go to the right side view, control three numpad to go to the left side view, seven numpad to go to the top view, control seven numpad to go to the button view, five numpad to go to the other graphic view, five again to get out there. You can find all these shortcuts by going to the view, viewpoint and choose one of them. Also you can click on this gizmo to rotate around the 3D world or click on this icon to zoom in or out, click here to look through the camera and you can click here to switch to the other graphic view. Let's say we want to pull this cube, what should we do? Well it's easy you can select the move tool in the quick menu. In the 3D world we have three dimensions, the X axis, the Z axis and the Y axis. By click and drag on these arrows we can move the selected object along that axis. The hotkey for that is G for grab. Hit GX to move along the X axis only, hit GZ to move along the Z axis only, GY to move along the Y axis only. What if we want to rotate this cube? What should we do? Again we can check out our quick menu to select the rotate tool. By click and drag on the color rings we can rotate along the single axis. The white ring can be used to rotate along our view vector. If we click on the inner ring we can rotate freely along the three axes. So hit R for rotate. Rx to rotate along the X axis only, Rz to rotate along the Z axis only, Ry to rotate along the Y axis only. And you can hit R twice to rotate freely. And now let's say we want to scale this cube. Go to our quick menu and select the scale tool. You can left click and drag to scale along a single axis. By click on drag on the little white ring we can scale the cube bigger or smaller. Or we can use the hotkeys for that. Hit S for scale, SX to scale along the X axis only, SZ to scale along the Z axis, SY to scale along the Y axis. This gizmo is for all orders like scale, move and rotate in one tool. How can I customize Blender layout? Hit Ctrl Alt Space to full screen your work area. Hit Ctrl Alt Space again to go back to the regular view. Ctrl Space to maximize your work area. Here we still have the bar on the top and the information bar on the button. Control space again to go back to the regular view. 
As you know, one numpad to front view, three numpad to side view, and seven numpad to top view. But what if we like to split this area quickly into three pieces? Just hit Ctrl Alt Q, Ctrl Alt Q again to go back to the regular view. Also, we can split a new area with mouse left click and drag on the corner, click here, and now we can change this area into different editors. By click and drag here, we can join the areas together. Hold Ctrl, click here and drag to swap between these areas. Or mouse right click on the borders and choose between split or swap. If you have multiple monitors and you want to add a new Blender workspace window, you can hold Shift left mouse click and drag on the corner here just like that. To save our customizing, go to File, Default, Save Setup Files. Just keep that in mind, if we save the customizing, it's gonna be the default setting for new files. Let's talk about the reference image. When it's come to modeling a character or anything, we need many reference images from the side, from the back, from the top, and from many angles. If you want to create a table as an example, you definitely need to know how the table looks like from the back and from the side. This is really, really important. In this tutorial series, we are going to create a human body. And as you know, the human body is very difficult and different from human to another. That's why we need to use the correct reference images. In our case, you can download the reference images for this character absolutely for free in the description below. For this tutorial, you don't care about the reference images too much because we have them. But if you want to create another character in the future, you need to keep that in mind that the reference images are highly, highly important. If you want to model a character correctly, you need to care about the edge flow. I mean the direction of the loops around the surface. Like the loop around the face, around the eyes, around the nose, around the ears, and around the neck. Guys, this is very important. We need clean topology for the animation process later. Select the camera and the light, hit X and delete them. We can hide the item menu with pressing N on the keyboard. Hit N again and here we go. Hit T on the keyboard to hide or show the tool bar. In this menu, we have the rotation, location, scale and the dimensions. Hit one numpad to go to the front view, GZ to move along the Z axis. And now we need to reset the location rotation scale into default. To do that, hit Ctrl A, all transforms. If you don't apply the scale, you will face many problems like the modifiers are not working or something like that. And here you can see the size of the cube in the 3D world. We want to use this cube to get the right height for this character. Let's decrease the side of the cube along the z-axis about 1.7. Click on this icon and go to the viewport display. Change the texture into wire. In this way we can see through the cube. And now we are ready to upload the reference images for this character. One numpad to go to the front view. Go with Shift A, Image, Reference and select this one. Hit S for scale, G for grab, and place the image into the center just like that. Click on this icon, activate opacity, and bring the opacity down. If you don't like to see the image from the back, just click on front. Click on the move gizmo, select the image, and push the image along the Y axis. If you are beginner in Blender, please don't go to the side view and apply a new image because you will face many, many problems if the guidelines are not correct. So what should we do? Well, it's easy. We can duplicate this image and rotate it around the Z axis only. Hit Shift D to duplicate and move along the Y axis. Hit RZ 90 degrees to rotate around the Z axis. Now we can push the image back along the Z axis. Three numpad to side view and now we can move along the Y axis only. Select this cube, hit X and delete it. We don't need it anymore. And of course, this tutorial series is for beginners. That's why we need to upload a new reference image for the head only. In this way, you can follow along this tutorial series and you get the final result that I have. So guys, now we need to repeat the last process like G to grab, S to scale, bring the opacity down and place the image into the center just so. When you are done, Shift D to duplicate the head, RZ 90 degrees to rotate around the Z axis and place the head just like that. 
This is our outliner. In the outliner, we can find any object that we add in the 3D view world, like camera, lights, objects, and so on. Because it's a big project, we need to rename everything that we add in the 3D view world. Double click to rename this image. I'm gonna write head, select the side image, and rename it head1. Just make sure to rename the whole images. Click here to add a new folder. You can rename this folder reference as an example. As I said before, we need to organize everything in the outliner. This is really important guys. Hold shift, select these images and move them into the new folder. If we uncheck this icon in the outliner, we can hide the images in one click. Click here and activate this icon. And now if we deactivate this icon in the outliner, we can select the images in the viewboard. And this is very useful because if you accidentally move the references, you will face many, many problems in the modeling process later. In the outliner, we are going to hide the body and body one because we are going to start with the head. Click on drag on the corner here to close this area. By click on drag on the corner here, we can split a new area. And as you know, N to hide the item and T to hide the toolbar. I like to use one area for the front view and another area for the side view. Go to the outliner again, rename this folder head and now we are ready to go. Now hit shift A, mesh, plane. Every time when we add a new object, the new object will pop up where the 3D cursor is. The 3D cursor is this white red circle. We can move the 3D cursor with holding shift mouse right click in the 3D viewboard. To reset the 3D cursor into default, hold shift S, cursor toward origin. Now we need to grab the plane along the Z axis. Hit R X 90 degrees to rotate the plane. Hit S for scale, S again. And now we need to follow the edge flow. We can start with the blue color. I mean this area around the mouth and the nose. Guys, this is very important. In the front view, we grab or move or scale along the X axis only. In the side view, we grab, move and scale along the Y axis only. And now we need to manipulate the geometry. To do that, hit tab to switch to the edit mode. This point called vertex and plural vertices switch a single point or position in the 3D space. We need to manipulate these points to follow the blue color. As we know, G for grab and now we need to try to follow the lines for the reference image. So don't forget to move the vertices as well in the side view. Hit A to select everything, period key to focus on this object. One numpad to go to the front view again. And now we need to extrude new vertices. Select this vertex, hold shift, select this one and hit E for extrude. Hit G for grab and place the vertices as well from the side and from the front. And again, hold shift, select this one and this one and hit E for extrude. As you see guys, I think you get it. We need to extrude new vertices to follow the lines for the reference image. Hit Alt Z to switch to the X-ray mode or click on this icon. Let's add a subdivision service modifier. This modifier used to split the faces of the mesh into smaller faces, giving it a smooth appearance. And as you see, we need to place the vertices again because the subdivision service modifier. To make the surface smooth, mouse right click, shade smooth. From here, we can increase or decrease the smoothness. And now we need to add a mirror modifier. This modifier, it's gonna mirror the mesh along the local axis X, Y, and Z. Click on the modifier icon and add a mirror modifier. Hit N, go to the transform menu, and now we need to reset the location rotation scale into default. To do that, hit Ctrl A, all transforms. Go to the mirror modifier again and activate clipping. By click on drag on the corner, we can push the mirror modifier into the top. And this is very important. Now select this vertex, hold shift, select this one and hit G, X to move along the X axis only. So let's create the red color. Tap to switch to the edit mode. Alt Z to switch to the X-ray mode. Select this vertex, hold shift, select this one and hit E for extrude. As we said before, don't forget to move the vertices in the side view as well. Now we need to extrude this single vertex. Select this vertex, hold control, mouse right click. By holding control, mouse right click, we can add new vertices. Now hold shift, select these four vertices and hit F to fill them. 
Hold shift again, select this one and this one and hit F to fill. Select this one and this one, hit E to extrude. And now we need to repeat the process like E for extrude, X for scale, G for grab, etc, etc and make a new mesh. Select this one and this one, hit E for extrude. Hit Ctrl R, scroll the mouse wheel to add new loop cuts. And again, we need to follow the lines for the reference image. We need to save our project. This is very important. Hit Ctrl S, create a new folder for this character, rename it and hit save blend file. So guys, well done for this tutorial. In the next video, we are going to finish the head.